Well, it's the first day of school, which is the and September is still filled for me, filled with smells and memories and uh, visions of uh, new beginnings. You know, it's a great season of hope. When we came in the first day, we had three buildings. What is the art building now? It was the cafeteria, the administration building, and what is the science building now? And in the science building were our classrooms. That was the classroom buildings. That was the three buildings on the campus. That was it. That was it. It was fields, snakes in it, you know, all kinds of animals in it. But that was it. Our three little buildings. Before the first day, what it was like was talking her into looking forward to coming to a new school with new friends, new location, new building. Uh, uniforms. Uniforms, uh, leaving public school where she had been <clears throat> since kindergarten. So um, I can remember the car trip out <laughs> with two of my girls in the car and, and pretty quiet and uh, particularly when we first went over that rickety bridge that was a concern for all of the original trustees. But we made it and they got out and now what? And it was scary, it was very <laughs> scary. When I drive in that gate and I see that sign and I've been doing it for years now, I still get excited. When I see that pond and that fountain, I look out at the beautiful campus, I see the the custodians in their carts, busy going around making, beautifying the campus. I see teachers scurrying to the classrooms, getting excited. They're here early to get their classroom set up. It's a feeling that um, evokes this sense of pride every time I drive onto this campus that, wow, I'm, I'm a part of country day. I, am, I have an older brother. And I remember him going off to school and I was so excited about starting kindergarten that at four o'clock I got up at my house and laid out my clothes in my bed and got dressed and went into my parents room and said I'm ready to go to school. We came onto campus and my first impression was big. It, I, I'd come from a 32 acre campus with with one building to a hundred acre campus with whatever number there were 10 or 15 10 or 15 buildings at that point and, and big was the first thing I thought of. I think we were all worried about you know what the lunch room was going to be like and you know what the classrooms were going to be like and what were the teachers going to be like and you know who were our new friends going to be you know for the first i guess two years we had chapel every every morning morning coming to school the first day getting all your stuff ready just kind of getting back in the swing of things getting that feel that school is finally here i liked it because i was a senior for four years uh, I was a senior in ninth grade, a senior in tenth grade, and a senior in eleventh grade and twelfth. Because I was a lot, they added a class every year, so it was a great deal for me. Peter Swartz uh, had a, a strong uh, plumb line of tradition. I was so tickled when my daughter Angie told me that she's going to be a room mother at kindergarten this year. I thought, that's great. Here we go again. The first one was, of course, the kindergarten rodeo. I mean, it's, it's just who we are as kindergartners. Everything leads up to the kindergarten rodeo. And then you tie that into the Fort Worth Stock Show. And it's just the kindergarten rodeo. No one ever forgets. I was a barrel. Uh, I was a barrel racer. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes into the conversation with Barbara Jungo, I was absolutely blown away as to the energy, uh, the commitment to the education of kids, and most importantly, the knowledge, the vision of the school, and what it would do for my children. That's part of who we are. That's not, that's not a curriculum that's written. We don't, we, I don't have a curriculum on, on uh, positive self-esteem. I don't have a curriculum on leadership. I don't have a curriculum on on the goodness of people. What I expect is that when a child is here in this, in this community, we are, by example, teaching them how to behave and, and how to respond and how to care and how to give back. I think when you have a positive experience 
that you want that same thing for your children. And Bill and I certainly had a wonderful positive experience while we were students here. And we continued that as alumni. And it was wonderful being able to have this as an option for our kids when they started school. I wholeheartedly agree. It's unbelievable, truly. And uh, I don't think, I certainly never had the expectations of, I think people Swartz kept saying 900 is our max. 900 is our max. We don't ever want a school bigger than 900 because we'd have to build all these new buildings and teachers, et cetera. Well, uh, this is an amazing campus. I know when they walk out of here, they are prepared. They are prepared better than I was when I graduated from high school. In all regards, they're better. They have a better awareness, a greater awareness, a global awareness. They're educated in all of the arts, all of the academics, and certainly athletics. Mr. Peterson told us that to, when someone asks where you go to school, you stand up straight and say your full name. So my name is McKenna Breedlove, and I go to Fort Worth Country Day, the best school in the country. This community wants wants uh, progress. They want they want the best, and you're not going to get that if you're if you're not running it 100 percent. One of the things that I think is the most admirable about Country Day is the commitment of the leadership of both um, the administration, the faculty, and the board of making sure that Country Day remains a, um, a compassionate uh, member of the community. The school and Fort Worth are so intertwined. I mean, besides the fact that we bear the name Fort Worth Country Day, which I'm very proud that we have that, by the way. Tom Ryan, Bob Hanger, Perry Bass, uh, Jim Garvey, but most of those were grandfathers. So, you know, that was one set. And then Paul Leonard and Rufus and Elton and Bill Meeker uh, were all parents. I truly believe their interest was establishing a good educational institution for their children, their grandchildren, and for Fort Worth. I mean, here you've got the business leaders of Fort Worth interested in this school. That this school to me is a, a, a beacon, a lighthouse of, of an incredible education legacy. And that's only because of the generosity and um, forethought of many, many people who've put time, effort, and financial support to this school. It's uh, invaluable. Um, we're intertwined in a way that um, I can't even imagine us being separated. I got to play every sport they offered, and I didn't think you could probably do that at a public school that had uh, 10 times as many kids. My graduating class was only 31 students, so, you know, they needed everybody they could get to play sports. Well, I'm most proud of what it is right now. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I've never, I've, I've never even thought about it being as beautiful and as well-funded and uh, wonderful teachers and a, a great headmaster. They've just fulfilled all of those trustees' dreams. It's, it's so fun to see all these people coming back, these former teachers, former students, past parents, grandparents. We've got third generations coming back, and I just think that's exciting. If you could be invisible and walk through these doors and watch the traditions come alive and watch these educators who are not here because they're being paid well, they're here because they love what they're doing they're the top in their field, and you see them during lunch or after school investing their time in the future of these kids. And then you take those same kids out of the classroom and you go watch them on the athletic field, and then they have to leave the game early because they have to go sing in the choir during the play performance. I don't know where else you're gonna find that. I mean, 50 years ago when the school started with an acorn of an idea, that was Board of Trustees, started with a simple building in the middle of these fields, 
and it's grown into a great tradition. Um, there's an honor and an integrity and a sense of, of pride in what has been built here on this corner of Ryan Irvin. If I had the opportunity to go back in time uh, and take advantage of all of the curriculums that are offered here, I'm gonna talk about three A's, the support of these well-rounded kids. We give the opportunity to go and pursue arts, certainly the core academics in a, in a, a traditional school education environment, um, you know, the math and sciences, and then certainly the athletic side of it, being able to, to participate and hone and develop leadership skills in and out of the classroom. So when we talk about a hundred kids in a class, every kid has the opportunity to excel in one of those environments um, that fits them. And quite, quite honestly, I see Fort Worth Country Day as a, a, a guiding, leading force in this community. In this first 50 years is a very cherished legacy on which to build for the next 50 years. Yeah, 50 years from now, I don't know what it's gonna be like. I can't wait to come back and see what it's like when I'm older. Maybe I'll send my kids here, hopefully. See how it goes. It's a wonderful, humbling opportunity. It actually humbles me to be able to give to this school, to know that I can give back to a school that's given so much to me. It's given me the opportunity to be the teacher I've only dreamed of being. I would say, like, everything about this school is like the best school in the universe. And I'm talking like there was no other school like this one. No, no one, no other school.